Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to the next episode of the Shore Whiteboard Sessions. On this episode we're going to be looking at visualising the RF landscape. So what we mean by that is in order to maximise the number of channels we can get on air and make sure those channels are usable, we need to know both the available spectrum as well as any other users that might potentially cause interference to our own systems. So if we're looking at sources of interference, then the main one's probably going to be our TV transmission. Now, since the digital switchover occurred, analog TV hasn't really been an issue in the UK, but there are still some countries in Europe where analog TV transmission is in use. So if you're doing shows in Europe or overseas, then that is something to be aware of. Um, for us here in the UK, then digital TV or DCV is the main source of TV transmission that could potentially interfere with your show. Now, Shaw do a great piece of software called Wireless Workbench that will allow you to enter the postcode of your show and that will give you information on the TV transmitters within the vicinity of your event and that information will be given in miles. But in conjunction with that, we also recommend that you use the PMSE website because that will give you information not only on TV transmission in the area, but also field strength data. Because you may end up in a situation where Workbench says there's a TV transmitter 10 miles away, but it's actually transmitting in the other direction, in which case it won't have any effect on your show. Other things to consider are LED walls. Now these things are becoming really popular at large events, um, but unfortunately they can kick out huge amounts of RF that just add to the noise floor and can make it really challenging to find the clean quality spectrum that we need to place our wireless microphones in in-ear monitoring systems. So if you're at one of these events, um, it might seem like a brilliant idea to place your antennas right on top of these walls because you're getting clear line of sight to your transmitters, um, but unfortunately, due to the amounts of RF that these things kick out, your transmitter now has to fight through all that noise in order to, re to reach the receiving antenna and get through. So it's just another challenge that you face at these larger events. Um, finally, the other thing to consider is other wireless systems that might be in use. So we've got uh, other wireless microphone users, um, in-ear monitoring systems and inter intercom systems can all share that UHF spectrum but if you have a clear view of the RF landscape you can coordinate around these potential sources of interference and hopefully ensure that your show runs as smoothly as possible. So we've told you about the benefits of being able to view the RF landscape and the only way you can really do that is through the use of scanners. Now there's plenty of scanners available on the market from a couple of hundred pounds right the way up to a few thousand and although they do have some slight differences between them, the key one is really the difference in noise floor. With the, with the lower price scanners you will get an indication of what is going on in the UHF spectrum so you'll get your big chunks like your DTV, you'll get some strong um, transmissions from maybe other wireless mic users, but there's a lot of detail that sits below that noise floor that you might be missing out on. So in this large chunk here, for example, there could be two or three other users that you just can't see because your scanner isn't capable of going down that far. Um, and that's one of the benefits of the more kind of higher priced or premium scanners is often that noise floor is so much lower that you, you can see right into say, the depths of the spectrum and pick up all that little bits of noise that you might be missing out on with some of the lower priced options. Um, in addition to that, any of the Shure networked receivers, you can do a scan with those. Um, the only issue there is that you're limited to the tuning bandwidth of that system. So if you're using something like our ULXD and K51, you, you can only scan from 606 to 670. Um, if you're only deploying mics in that region, then that's more than adequate but if you're deploying mics across multiple bands you might want to look at getting a full wide band scan um, say from like 470 to 952 and you'll get the clearest picture possible. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Shore Whiteboard session. Um, if you want to know some more in-depth information on both RF scanners and the rest of the UHF bands 
then you can join us at our wireless mastered seminars as well as wireless workbench classes or you can subscribe to other episodes in the series from losingyourvoice.co.uk. Which ice cream flavor has the biggest effect on RF? <laughs> <laughs>